Hi, I'm John, and I'm the author of the Open Source GIS blog. In this video, we will take a look at several of the free and open source geographic information system software out there, a few related tools, and wrap up looking at JavaScript libraries for creating online interactive web maps. QGIS is a desktop GIS and is particularly popular amongst those looking to replace ArcGIS with a free and open source piece of software. QGIS has additional functionality provided by easy to download and install plugins. To download QGIS, head over to the Download Now button and select an installer based on your operating system, whether Windows, Mac OS X, or Linux. Another very capable desktop GIS is Grass GIS, which can also serve as an ArcGIS desktop replacement. Grass GIS was originally developed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and many of its functions can also be found in QGIS. Grass can be more difficult to use than QGIS because of the need to create workspaces, as well as a better understanding of how commands are written. Interested in exploratory spatial data analysis and cluster detection? Then head on over to the University of Arizona's Geoda Center. Here we'll look at two different pieces of software. Get started by clicking the Software tab at the top. Here we'll look at two different pieces of software. The first is Geoda, which focuses on spatial data manipulation, visualization, mapping, exploratory data analysis, and spatial statistics and GWR4, which allows for geographically weighted regression. On this page, you also see several other programs that are available. Some have finished development and are being maintained, while others are only in alpha and are not complete. Be sure to come back to this page to check for updates regularly and to see what new pieces of software may be being developed. Next, we'll look at some remote sensing related software. The first is Last Tools, which allows users to visualize and process LiDAR data. For example, Last Ground, which allows you to see the, the last returns, or Bare Earth, as seen here in the middle, compared to all returns at the top. Next, Last Classify allows users to group returns into whether they belong to buildings or vegetation. We won't take a look at all the functions in Last Tools, but there is one more tool that is worth mentioning, which is Last Color. This allows users to color LiDAR returns by the, the color in digital orthophoto quadrangles, or DOQs, to produce a more lifelike image. You may have noticed the .com at the end of the Rapid Lasso site. This is the commercial part. And here's lasttools.org, which is more based for education and research. However, I like the look and feel of the rapidlasso.com site better. Last Tools isn't the only LiDAR viewer out there. There's also Fusion, created by the U.S. Geological Survey, which also allows you to import LAS and compressed LAS formats. The last LiDAR viewer we'll look at is Fugro Viewer by Fugro. It's an excellent free, but not open source program, which means you can't edit its code. It also allows you to import LAS and compress the LAS formats. So what about other types of remote sensing? Orfeo Toolbox comes as a standalone program called Monteverde, and also as a processing toolbox in QGIS. Orfeo Toolbox's website has undergone many improvements in the last few years, so figuring out how it works is easier than ever before. Simply put, Orfeo Toolbox is not a black box, meaning that you can figure out how everything is done and accomplished. In case you want to know specifically what Orfeo does before you download and use it, be sure to click under Functions and Algorithms, and you'll see supported formats as well as a wide variety of functions that it performs. Features include allowing users to manipulate images and select different bands, for example, as well as extract features and perform a wide variety of other tasks. 
Next, as a change of pace, we'll look at two tools that can be used in conjunction with a GIS like QGIS or even ArcGIS. The first tool is Geospatial Modeling Environment, formerly known as Hoth Tools. There's an extensive list of commands that GME allows users to utilize. These commands can help fill in gaps in your ArcGIS license and also perform another of important spatial analytic techniques. It's important to note that Hoth's tools only works in conjunction with ArcGIS as opposed to the next tool we'll look at, which can be used with any GIS. So that concludes our look at GME. It's a really handy set of tools that are available. Definitely check it out. Next, we'll look at CrimeStat 4, the latest release of this terrific toolbox from the National Institute of Justice. Like Hoth's tools, this isn't strictly a GIS. For example, you can't view geographic information. So why would you want to use it? Well, CrimeStat allows you to perform a lot of different types of spatial analysis. Although geared towards crime analysts, obviously, there's a lot of different uh, routines that CrimeStat has that are really applicable to a wide variety of fields of study and situations. Next, we'll take a look at free and open source JavaScript libraries for creating online interactive web maps. First, we'll take a look at Leaflet. Leaflet's a lightweight JavaScript library. In fact, the code only ends up being about 33 kilobytes. It's really easy to use and a terrific JavaScript library that I've used for several interactive maps on my blog. You can see an example here as I sort of move the mouse around. Um, you can see some examples of the simple code below about how to add a map and a layer or marker in this case. Um, and then you can see how many different people are using Leaflet, which is absolutely tremendous a great way to create an online interactive map. You'll see a lot of the different features here. Um, like other free and open source things that we've talked about today, there are plugins and add-ons that give Leaflet extra functionality that have been created by the terrific community of users that are out there. Next, we'll look at Open Layers, which I believe Leaflet is actually based off of. Open Layers is a lot harder to use in my opinion, um, so I would definitely give Leaflet a first go. Um, before taking a look at open layers. Want to keep up to date on all the going-ons of free and open source GIS software? Then head over to osgeo.org, the open source geospatial foundation website for community blogs and news about upcoming events and conferences related to free and open source GIS. You also see a list of completed projects that have been sponsored by OSGEO as well as incubating projects. If you like this video, please click the like button below or subscribe. And for more information about the software that I discussed, please see the comments below for links to the individual websites.